May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed, now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we are celebrating a votive Mass in honor of the holy family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Often in our family and in our spiritual life, we have some suffering to endure. St. John Chrysostom tells us, we must expect temptations and dangers from the very first days of our lives. Consider, in fact, that immediately from the cradle, this happened to Jesus. He had just been born, and the tyrant's fury was already unleashed against him and forced him to seek to escape to a place of exile. And his mother, so pure and innocent, was forced with him to flee to a foreign country. This shows you that when you have the honor of being engaged in some ministry or spiritual service and see yourself surrounded by infinite dangers and forced to endure cruel misfortune, you should not be upset. This example, therefore, urges you to endure misfortune firmly and makes you aware that this is usually the fate of spiritual men, to have, that is, as inseparable companions trials, and tribulations. So St. John Chrysostom. It is thus more than convenient and expedient for us to contemplate this holiest of all families who ever lived on this earth. The holy family, as the name itself suggests, is holy. Holy because each of its components is holy. The child is holy by nature. The mother is holy by privilege, and Joseph is just by grace. The holiness of the family as a whole is given by the sum of the unequal holiness of each individual component. The Roman Martyrologium announces the Feast of the Holy Family, saying, The Feast of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, the most holy example for Christian families, who invoke the necessary help. The Holy Family, image and reflection of the Most Holy Trinity in Heaven, wants to give us all necessary and useful graces in order to restore and sanctify our individual souls, our families, and the whole of society. The Family has a special need of the restoration of its God-willed order which will procure joy to its members. God's blessings need to be bestowed on it in abundance. Only when the family is healthy can a people be healthy. Only a holy family life guarantees the flourishing of the kingdom of God on this earth. Therefore, it is not absurd that a son of man and the son of God wanted to enter this earth as a member of a family. Instead, he spent most of his life on earth in its bosom. What does the short time of his public appearance mean compared to the three decades in Nazareth? Even the Holy Scriptures expressly point out that the twelve-year-old Jesus, when according to the Jewish opinion, he was entitled to some independence and expressed this by remaining in the temple voluntarily returned to Nazareth, into the bosom of his family. Thus we conclude that the Savior of the world must have had to accomplish there things of infinite value. Through prayer, sacrifice, prayer and work, he wanted to purify, expiate, sanctify, bless and atone for the primor primordial cell of the human race, the family, in the Holy Family of Nazareth. Especially nowadays, as the Catholic and natural family, as it is willed by God for the good of men, is threatened and undermined by divorce, same-sex unions, violence, pornography, sex education of children, and many other things. We need to turn to the Holy Family as a model to be imitated and as mediators to be invoked in order to obtain all the graces which we need. 
After the August Trinity in heaven, there is nothing so worthy of our veneration and love as the lovable Trinity on earth, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. After the three divine persons, there is no one to whom we are more indebted than Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Finally, after the three divine persons, there is no one we ought to invoke with more trust than Jesus, Mary and Joseph. The Christian family, modeled on the Holy Family, must be a community of prayer. A family that prays together also stays together. This principle was established by the popular missionary Father Patrick Payton, the founder and propagator of the Furok family Rosary Crusade. After the Second World War, he experienced how families that had long been deprived of their husbands and fathers because of the war no longer harmonized when he had come back in the family. Suddenly, family prayer was widely lucky. The family members were alienated from one another. They no longer understood each other. They no longer prayed together. So Father Peyton began to promote the rosary to be prayed together. It was a great success. A true popular movement was born. People did respond to his suggestions and began to pray. The parents together, the parents in front of the children, with the children. His efforts were greatly acknowledged by families, one of which says, Since we again prayed together, peace and harmony has returned to our marriage and to our family. Father Peyton, in his crusade for the family rosary, pointed out the example of the Holy Family, which was a community of prayer in the most beautiful sense of the word. If prayer is rightly called a pious conversation with God and the saints, then every conversation between the members of the Holy Family was in fact an unceasing prayer. Mary and Joseph's conversation with Jesus was certainly a prayer, considering that this child in the Holy Family is indeed the incarnate Son of God. And the speech of the child Jesus to Mary and Joseph was certainly also prayer, since prayer is also a conversation with the saints, and Mary and Joseph are without doubt the greatest saints who ever passed over earth. In the litanies of the Holy Family, we invoke them. Holy Family, despised by the world, but great before God, pray for us. Even if we Catholics, who hold firm to the true doctrine, as it is revealed by God, taught by the Church and by the saints, are despised and ridiculed, we want to confidently entrust and consecrate ourselves and our families to this Holy Family, so that they may pray and intercede for us, and help us to convert and restore our own spiritual life and that of our families. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary and Joseph be blessed, now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.